Inside Science. Perhaps there's a sliver of good news amidst the current pandemic disaster. A massive drop in global air pollution. These satellite maps show the concentration of nitrogen dioxide before and after regions issued orders for residents to stay at home. Nitrogen dioxide in the air aggravates respiratory conditions, especially for those with asthma. And it triggers ozone formation, a gas which is itself damaging to the lungs. So shutting down travel and other activity around the world isn't just slowing the spread of the virus. It's also giving our locked down lungs a welcome break from poisonous air. In fact, two studies this month, which used data collected in March, found that areas of northern Italy, where the air is more polluted than southern Italy, showed a higher death toll from COVID-19. Now, so far, this is just a correlation. There is no proof that more air pollution leads to worse outcomes from coronavirus infection. But the study's authors suggest that people living with high chronic air pollution could be more prone to lung inflammation which might play a part in making them more at risk of death from the coronavirus. And air pollution isn't just a European problem. According to the American Lung Association, nearly 46% of the population of the US could be breathing polluted air under ordinary conditions. 150 million Americans live in counties that typically have unhealthy levels of ozone or particle pollution. Now, these are particles less than 2.5 micrometers wide suspended in the air that can be inhaled deeply into the lungs and lodged there, damaging the sensitive tissue. But has that pollution factored into how the disease has spread, already killing tens of thousands of people? As of yet, researchers haven't fully examined that. But let's press pause on pollution and the pandemic and turn instead to technology, specifically cyborgs. And this month brought proof of concept of a new kind of electronic skin. It's a soft polymer patch that can sense various chemicals in sweat, like acidity, glucose level, as well as skin temperature. And then it can transmit that information via Bluetooth to a computer. Now what's so exciting is that it's powered by the sweat itself. Enzymes held next to the skin break down lactate secreted from the pores, fueling a cell that drives current through the device. And when the e-skin is integrated with stretch sensors, it can even remote control robotic prostheses, albeit quite slowly. But whilst this saran wrap skin is good at sensing stimuli, it's limited in its responses, unlike these smart contact lenses. Now, these clever contacts can monitor blood glucose levels from the eye and release therapeutic drugs on demand, delivering medicine into the eye as effectively as an injection would. Now they could form the basis of more convenient and comfortable treatment for eye diseases like diabetic retinopathy. It's sight for sore eyes. And finally, this. Those are waves of electrical activity in brain cells stimulated by this tone and recorded by a wafer thin sheet of electrodes, which had been implanted on the brain surface one year beforehand. A long term recording from the brain like this is very very hard to do. Not only is the brain extremely sensitive to foreign objects, but it's also a deeply unforgiving environment for electronics. The ions, the currents and the chemicals swirling around in there tend to corrode and destroy most sensors. But the electronics of this device are protected by a layer of silicon dioxide crystal, less than a thousandth of a millimetre thick, grown around the electrode array. The researchers used this armoured array to record the neural responses of monkeys listening to those uncomfortable tones, and they showed that they could predict what the monkey had heard based only on the neural activity they recorded. Now, that might seem like a modest application, but in the future, it's only through long-term brain-machine interfacing like this that we'll eventually be able to connect serious cybernetic enhancements to our minds. And that's it from me this month. Stay safe. Goodbye. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.